Yeah. Right, I'm waiting on you. Oh, okay. It's live. It's live. What's going on? I mean, on? you know, you sat down, got up, moved. I'm sorry. Sure? I'm so I mean, sorry. you know, if you uh, want to, you know, go do the show. Okay. No audio. There's no audio? There's no audio. What? Should be audio. Mic's on. I got audio. You got audio? Audio's working. Audio's, Audio's working. working. Should be audio. Audio's working. Uh, we're a little early today because we're going to leave a little early today. Today I have a birthday party I need to go to. So we thought we'd start the show a little bit early and get you guys all excited. Let's you talk Android speak? Auto. What's your favorite head unit? <laughs> Let's not talk Android Auto. <laughs> it's working awesome. What? I, you know, I haven't even downloaded iOS 12. No, I no, have it. I, I got the notification. I haven't done. I need to just get a new phone. Um, yeah. These notes in the house. Oh, Waze CarPlay. Yeah, yeah now, go. now actually Waze. Uh, it's part of CarPlay. Um, it's awesome. We use it. I use it. You don't use it. it. Yeah, I use it. I, you know, I got yeah. to download. It's pretty I cool. The, I still have the 4400, so I should see how it works wirelessly. Yeah. I'll have to do that next week. Yeah. Yeah. What's Hello going on from Idaho. Idaho? Miguel. All right, a couple quick things that we need to get out of the way. Right we'll away. Get right into questions. Two things. One, Monday we're having guests on the show. We have two guests coming in, three guests coming in. Two are going to be on the show. Lori, of course, from Kicker is going to be in the background. We'll bring her on and say hi. You guys remember Lori? She was the nice lady that showed What's me Jason? around Kicker. What's up, Jason? Uh, have a good show. Got ahead of some friends. Sorry I missed it. Sorry we're going to miss you, buddy. buddy, but I know the feeling. It's gonna be a quick, a quick, a quick uh, video. Can we buy stickers? No, you can get stickers for free. You don't have to pay anything for stickers. Stickers don't cost you any money. You just go to Five Star Sticker at Yahoo.com, and we'll send you out some stickers. That's it. That's all Type you gotta do. Type your address. Now, what we're gonna do? Two things, as I was saying. So, Kicker's gonna be here. Laura's gonna be here. But since I have them in different order on my phone, we got these in the mail the other day, last week actually. And we yeah. didn't know who they were from. These are cool. These are um, nut driver magnetic. Magnetic. tip these were awesome we got two one for him one for me and we're like i wonder who sent these because i didn't buy them yeah and larry fernandez uh one of the patreons was nice enough to send those to us and the funny thing was is i was actually looking to buy them Side for us yeah. Uh, yeah and then and they showed up and it really threw me off because i was like wait oh. a minute what what I happened i didn't buy it um, i didn't buy these Inside, john Ram, yeah uh hello hello from texas um so that was cool. So we yeah. got we got those in. South from New Zealand. Um, and which brings us back to the Patreons real quick. He's a Patreon. Yeah. And one of the cool things about being a Patreon is if you like podcasts or you like video, either yeah. way, if you're a Patreon, you get a podcast video. That's the video of the podcast. Yeah. You're the only one that gets them. So the Patreons are the only ones that get a video version of the podcast that we do. We try to do them at least twice a month. Right now there's one up. There's gonna be another one released on Monday. So there'll be two podcast videos as a Patreon you can watch. Uh, and you get it a week early. So everyone that's a Patreon gets the podcast a week early. I'm um, happy you guys got them, was concerned. No, no, thank you, Larry. That's thank Larry you. right there. Uh, how you um, Secondly, back to Kicker's gonna be here on Monday. So we got two guys coming in. The first one is Dave Glasgow. For those of you guys that watch or fans of Kicker, there's the Kip and Dave show. Hi, I'm Kip. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Chip. Hi, I'm Dale. Anyways, Dave from the Kip and Dave show is going to be on here with us. They have some stuff they're doing out in Tampa. And then also, um, Bart Deal, who is head of uh, the, the Black Works at uh, Kicker, meaning all future yep. products, things that we can't talk about. Uh, he's going to be here. So we have Bart Deal, Dave Glasgow from Kicker, along with Lori. John Schneider will be here too, but yeah. they'll both probably be in the background sitting in the corner. I'm going to drag Lori out to say hi because she did a really good job showing me around. Kicker's been really fun. I'm glad you guys enjoyed yeah. watching that. Um, I'm, I'm, it's been wonderful, the response we've gotten from that video. Hopefully that'll show other manufacturers that, hey, we should come out and show you guys this stuff because people want to see it, right? Yep. Emily. Was that was that all that was on the list? What? Finally, finally found Larry. Finally found Larry. 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 Um, Larry. Anyway, was that was, that, was yeah. that it? I got someone lying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's that was, it. That These was, guys that are going to be news here. Yeah. So Monday's Facebook Live show. There again, same time, six thirty. We'll put up a cool um, reminder. There's a lot of lot of nuts in the house. Um, 
We'll put up a, a reminder of that. Paul from Humid Atlanta. Hey, it's hey, Dean up, Fernando man? from even Humider, Florida. <laughs> um, dude, it, it's ridiculously uh, squirrel. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, no. How many of you guys like the melting pot? How many of you guys have fondue restaurants? I got to go do that for Sue's birthday tonight. We're driving out to do a fondue restaurant. That's why the show's early. Um, not particularly a fan, but, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, now, no, we haven't do nothing with Audio Frog. Um, other than talk to Andy and buy his cool RTA. Correct. So we did and, buy, and, and I tell you and what. And they say they are amazing speakers, oh, you yeah, know? Exactly. So they are really nice products, so. Um, Actually, it's funny. We were just talking about it yesterday because uh -huh. uh, one of our reps just picked up picked up Audio Frog. So we have the Audio Frog RTA test kit. And for right now, really the only thing that it's done other than cost me $200 yeah. um, is we've used the CD. So right now I have a $200 CD that I've used. No, it, it's a full kit and it's actually fully functional and awesome. We've just been so busy I haven't had time to actually use it which we want to because the DSR-1 when we're, or not the DSR-1, the iTest mic that from audio control that we used is nice, but limited. So we were hoping to move this over in to take care of those problems that right. we have. So yeah. What's up, Justin from Direct Tech? Andy is a really nice guy, by the way, What's too. Up, clean? So if you ever get an opportunity to G35, talk to him, yeah. talk to him. Um, don't like playing paying all that money to cook my food. I'm food. Right? Yeah, totally, Rob. I'm I'm uh, yeah. I in, in uh not yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um it is good to calibrate You're amplifiers really with a multimeter? Um I don't like to calibrate amplifiers with a multimeter because I'm okay. It's not the end of the world. But it leaves a lot of variables. So when you're when you're doing your math, you you have to assume that the amplifier is exactly the wattage that it says it is. Mm -hmm. It's probably not. You have to make sure you have the right voltage. But there again, you probably don't. Um, and then when you do your math, you you spit out this magical thing, and you have no way to do gain overlap or anything like that. A DD1 is definitely the way to go. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it, it's definitely better than nothing. What's that, but, sir, Joe? What is not, I mean, so, yeah. yeah. So there's too many variables and not enough constants. So, right. you know, it's hypothetical. Hypothetically, if you use it, it's gonna work. And, you know, if you set it to 26.2 volts, then yeah, you'll, you'll have this amount of powered output that should be X amount of wattage at X right. amount of voltage, and it should be all awesome. But that doesn't mean that that amplifier is not clipping. You can't right. see it. Uh, all you can see is the voltage. Okay, uh, well, you are you use- ignoring my what what is, oh I'm not I'm Adam slow down Adam I'm <laughs> guessing that that's Adam yeah, I don't think so A T A V Adam Vision I don't know I don't know um, um, okay anyways. okay anyway <laughs> um will you use the bass boost on the amp or not uh I like to use the bass boost on the amp if I have no other bass boost uh the 8200 does not have network mode none of the between the 8000 and the 8200, none of those have network mode. The new 8400 has network mode. That was one of the big changes in the radio. Um, as far as bass boost on an amplifier, it really depends. Like some amplifiers, like the Alpines, don't have bass boost. Other amplifiers put bass boost in. Do you need bass boost at all? No. But if you run bass boost, like, like Pioneer has bass boost on the radio, it affects all the outputs. So it affects the mid range, it, front rear sub, it affects everything. So if you're a person that likes bass boost, um, which there's no reason not to, I mean, that's yeah. why you have an epicenter, um, then you want to use it on the sub amp because you just right. want to affect the bass boost out of the sub. You don't want to muddy up your mids and highs. So that's why I'm not a fan of using it on the radio because it doesn't just come out of the sub, it comes out of everything, which can blow speakers and do bad things. And bass boost can do bad things also, but just have to be real careful. All right, what is a good uh, harness for the 2007 Silverado LT? Only need to retain steering wheel controls and a basic harness install. What it's year a 1400 is it? uh, it's a 2007. 2007, uh, you're gonna wanna go on to pack-audio.com and pick up the RP4 version of the harness. Mm -hmm. Basically, you have an RP3, RP4, RP5. Five. RP3 is just basic integration into it. There's also an LC version, stands yeah. for low cost. The LC and the RP3 are very similar to one another. But you the want the RP4. The is the RP3 has all your, what they call navigation output, which is illumination, um, re 
reverse camera, reverse, camera. reverse trigger, VSS, parking brake, and the ability to do steering right. wheel controls. The LC doesn't have that, it just has basic like turn on. Basically. Now, if you need built in steering wheel controls, yeah. that's where the RP4 takes over. The RP4 gives you built in steering wheel controls. They all give you basic Bose integration. Mm -hmm. Where the RP5 comes in is that if you want to do everything in I don't we very rarely use an RP5. RP5 is mainly for OnStar if you want to retain yeah. OnStar. Um, or it, it, RP5 does everything back. Yeah. It's just it's also the most expensive. It, RP5. RP4 RP, is, is RP the way 4. to go. Yeah. All right, uh, Kevin. Uh, most of the time we put the kicker, the three, the 301 under the seat. You gotta make sure if it's like, you know, uh, you know free, yeah. you can move your seat. Uh, if you're not mounted all the way to the back, depends if it does four doors or two doors, depends on your car, but yeah. So, hey Dean, question. Why does the LCQ1 audio control make hissing sound when the volume is on zero? zero. That's called floor noise. Uh, it's a high level to low level adapter. So at what, what you're asking it to do is take an amplified signal, electronically shrink it down, and then reamplify it. Yeah. Now, depending on what kind of car you have it in, you could also need the LGDs, which are the these guys right here. Um. All right, Julio. Uh, MV MVX uh, amplifiers. We never work on those um, because we're not dealer. But I mean, apparently I heard they're, they're good. About them. Good, good, these, good amplifiers. These are the LGDs. If you have a newer vehicle, what that has, you know, from let's say 2015 on up. These are designed for the Class D amplifiers that are in those. This is a Sobel network. What it's designed to do is add a little bit of resistance in to the radio that the speaker would normally have, which helps to level out the output. Because sometimes when you put a line drive or a high level, low level in there, you get that hiss because the Class D amplifier on the radio goes crazy and does things like that. So this is designed to help fix that. And for the most part, it does that. But yeah, you're gonna get a little hiss because it's a high level, low level. All right, uh, if you guys have done yet already, um, that would be nice if you guys make a video of what do you use base settings on a two and a three way active setup. Okay, yeah, we can work on that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what head unit should I do in my truck? Not Kenwood or Pioneer, uh, JVC or Alpine? <laughs> I mean, no, uh, I think what he's looking for is a sunny. Yeah. Oh, Oris. Oh, I'm what? still doing a JVC or an Alpine. I gotta uh, be honest with uh, you. I'm still doing JVC or Alpine. You like sunny? You know, cause I, I, it's too limited. I think they're too really? limited. I, I, I think there's more. I mean, if I have to choose between a JVC and an Alpine because the JVC is closer to Kenwood than Alpine, I'm probably still picking the JVC. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, picked up a DSR one. Your vids helped greatly with my Christian? decision. Is there a source that can explain guide the tuning process, like tuning for dummies? Man, tuning for dummies would be one of those great books that I wish somebody would like. Not looking for a specific brand. Oh, All right. Um, gotta. Okay. Uh, anyways, Tuning for Dummies would be a really cool book. I wish somebody would write it, but no, there is no Tuning for Dummies, unfortunately. Uh, it's just one of those things that you, you have to play with and just figure out what works best. All right, on an F-150 video in the install diaries, yeah. uh, what are the reason for connecting in the kick panels for the front doors ah. versus connecting with the harness behind the radio? That's a great question. And actually, you probably were the one that typed it and asked me in the video itself that I didn't respond to. And I'm sorry, I just can't respond to all of them. What wonderful question. So for those of you that caught the F-150 video, we were going active in that. And what we did is we ran brand new wiring from the amplifier up to the kick panels and then up to the tweeters. The question is, why didn't we just go behind the radio, which is yeah. what we do a lot of the time. It's much easier and would, would have been way easier. And yeah. the reason why we didn't do that is because the customer was like, hey man, I want to go new power, I want to go new speaker wires because I'm going active, we're putting 110 watts to each speaker. I want to go better than the factory. It was one of the things we talked about when we were designing the system. And in that particular vehicle, we can't run speaker wires into the doors. Right. So really what it came down to is he wanted new wiring in the car 
so that we could get the most signal, the cleanest, the best power. So that's what it is. That was the only reason we did it. Um, sometimes, I mean, the factory would have held the amplifier perfectly fine. We wanted to limit the amount of stuff though yeah. between our and there. We do it all the time, but you guys know when we hook up an F-150, we put the T-harness in, we'll run the amplifier into the T-harness and go out. It's usually 100% okay, yeah. but we wanted to make sure, in this case, it's Tony from UK. he wanted all new wiring, and that was the best we could come up with to get him new wiring. A lot of guys want to put new wiring in their cars. That was kind of to show people that, look, if you can't run through the boot, this is the next best thing. All right, uh, Dean, what size relay do I need to run two fans and an EQ? Two Pioneer GM 8604 amps and the Orion SPL X 3K amp. So it's not to really have to worry about because any one of these standard Bosch style relays is up to 40 amps. Most will, most will do up to 40 amps. Some of them yeah. are 35. Everything you've turned on is going to take anywhere between, let's say, two amps to a half amp. So just pick up one of these. This is all you need. That's it. You only need one. Can you use more? You can use as many as you want. I've uh, people like to line them up and do cool things and have them, yeah, and cool put switches things. and. But you only need one. Yeah. That's it. That's all you need. All right. Where can I find a dash kit for a Honda Civic 2007 right hand drive? Uh, I believe Auto, Auto Leads. Leads. Auto Leads. You know, Auto it's Leads. Uh, European. Uh, yeah, Auto Leads yeah. at UK something. So what wire would you run to do that? It all depends. Um, 12 gauge, 16 gauge, you take the pick. If you're gonna do it, 12 gauge isn't a bad idea, you know? It really just depends. 16 gauge is fine. The car technically has a 18 to 16 gauge in it. It's somewhere between there. Yeah. Um, we went with 16 in this particular one, but you could use anything you want. It just, it's just, it's up to you. I mean. Have you got, have you got tried Neodym speakers? What? Have you got, have you tried oh, the Neos. Neodymium? No, not a brand Neodymium. I mean, most of the speakers it's that we use nowadays have, all the Alpines have Neodymiums. Neodymium. Um, the, fo the um, not the Focal, the, the, the Morel have Neodymiums. Yeah. Won't most new car speaker wires handle up to 100 watts? No, definitely not. Especially when you're talking about Toyota. American? Yeah. Toyota? No. Toyota's one of those companies that just loves to screw with us constantly. Toyota's even taken to using aluminum wire aluminum for their wire. speaker wires in yeah. some cases. Yeah. And that's really amusing because you'll have Japan. like an 18 gauge wire that all of a sudden jumps up to like a 16 gauge wire uh, or bigger and you're like, wow, what the heck? It's because it's aluminum. So they're going up in size to compensate for the fact that they're using aluminum wire. Aluminum wire sucks, you can't solder to it. So you end up running new wire anyways. But some of these manufacturers are getting real tiny. You know, yes. I mean, 100 watts actively crossed over should most car man, most wiring should handle that no problem. It shouldn't um, be an issue. Danielle Pound, that's the new member of Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, Lexus GS350. <laughs> if you. No, no. I found on my 2012 Caravan the front door speaker plug wires were out of polarity. It's a Dodge. Chances yeah. are good. Dodge likes to do that. Dodge likes to put one speaker out of polarity, um, usually the passenger front corner because it adds spaciousness to the car. Uh, that phase out of the, the phasing, meaning the delay in time because of the polarity, yeah. adds to the driver a spaciousness feeling other than than making you nauseous because that's what out of polarity speakers do to me but they love to do that yeah all um, right and the, they all pop red too chrysler's like to pop red yeah. you know all the cars you know pop green chrysler's all pop red so they all move backwards all right okay, on sorry. the lexus gs350 if i just want to connect the factory soft wires to an aftermarket amp yeah do i need inline converter or i just need to use an aftermarket amp high level to low level so it depends on the aftermarket amp you're using because there again, it all depends on how much power voltage is coming out of that speaker. So what you can do is you can put a test tone through there playing 40 hertz. You could take your digital multimeter and set it to AC and you could test it, okay? And see what kind of output AC voltage you get. 
it's gonna put out a number, let's say anywhere yeah. between, let's say 10 to 22 volts. Then you could take that number and you could check it against the high level input in the owner's manual of the amplifier. Some of them will take up to 18 volts. So yes, technically you could just use a, the input, the high level input of the amplifier, but that's something you have to check. If you have a factory output, if you have a factory subwoofer that you're tying into, you want to do that because some of them have a lot of voltage depending on how much wattage is going into it. Yeah. If yeah, that's the case, then you need an LC2I that will handle up to, or will handle that higher voltage yeah. between like 18 to, I don't know, 24 or 25. I don't remember what the top is on that, but it's a lot. Uh, hey guy, it's Sunday morning here in South Australia. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, let me see. Somebody say they hate um, what? I don't, I don't hate what? I don't know. Um, Let me see. Hi guys, hope you have a great weekend. Cool. Uh, back to the Odyssey question. Do you need a two channel or four channel output? I think it said. It just depends on what you're trying to do. Um, technically, all you need is a left and right output to go into any system. It's just a matter of how much functionality you want. If you want balance and fader controls, then you need four. Uh, the other thing too is if it has a factory subwoofer, you're going to need five. So something to consider or three you know okay um i have a factory amp and with 12 infinity speakers yep the factory amp has a dsp yeah and i want to add an amplifier for a door speakers how do i go about doing this what kind of car is it uh that's it that's okay that's what without knowing what kind of car it is we can't answer that however if it's something like a chrysler or a dodge you could use an Amp Pro. If it's something like a Toyota, you could there again, use an, an Amp, Amp Pro. Pro. An Amp Pro is a product made by Pack Audio, and what it allows you to do is tee in and get a preamp section out of the radio. You can retain all the existing speakers and the amplifier doing exactly what they need to do, but then also get six channel, five volt output out of the radio, full bandwidth, non high level, low level. It's an actual signal, just like if you were to put an aftermarket radio, Call it tap into that house. and you're good to go. So that that's how you do that. Toyota make, they make it for Toyota, they make it for GM, they make it for Chrysler, they make it for a couple. Um, what is Ask the, Jeff Smith. Yeah. what is the absolute best double den out there? GPS not included. Um, GPS not included? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go 9905. 9905? Okay. Um, oh, damn it, I, I didn't get a chance to read that. I was trying to read that. Um, I installed a pack radio RP5 GML and what setting for Bose? I did not get the owner's manual. Um, it's for Bose. Uh, so and on RP5, like we were just talking about RP4, RP5, RP5 has two inputs, one for Amplify Premium and one for Standard. If you have the Bose system, you want to put in the Amplify Premium for your speaker inputs or outputs, one of them. Okay, does the AP4 GM61 bypass the ANC or do we still need to... Yes. To need to do something with no, the bypass? No, it bypasses the ANCs. However, it bypasses and negates the ANCs from having to do anything. But if you're still keeping the factory stereo in there, like, if you're still going to be using the factory amplifier for anything in the car, then you're still going to want to disconnect the ANCs. If you're putting in a whole new stereo, which is all we've ever done with an Amp Pro, uh, then you don't have to worry about the ANCs. They're, they're null and void at that point. All right. Does bass extension oh. or Kenwood single cool, Chris. DIN? What? Does ba bass extension on Kenwood single DIN yes. add distortion? Not to the highs. The purpose of bass extension on a Kenwood radio is to just, it's a really cool feature that they put in. That's like we were talking about with the Pioneers with bass boost. When you turn on bass boost, it affects everything. When you turn on bass extension, it just turns off all that and just puts it through the subwoofer output and not affect the highs. So it actually lets the subwoofer part of the EQ or the bass side of the EQ just go out the, the sub output. So it's kind of neat. So yeah, bass extension is really nice to use on a, on a Kenwood radio. Okay, um, I'm an old school dynamite guy. I'm looking to sound it in my car. What is the main difference between the Stinger, Rockhill, and Dynamite? Uh, the name that they stamp on it. 
<laughs> it's yeah. all the same stuff. It's yeah, all the yeah. same stuff. Yeah, and maybe be like you dynamite guys. They're gonna say, oh no no no, this is better. It's all I the mean, same stuff. We've got know, three pieces of exactly. sound bending that we stuck on a dirty door about three years ago on the back side of this, and, it, and they've been baking in the sun for three years. They all stick the same. They all do the yeah. same. Yeah. Uh, guy asked, where can I get a harness for my Pioneer Radio? Uh, it's a place called PackParts.com. Yep. That's Pack Parts, not to be confused with Pack Dash Audio. It's no, a totally pack different parts. companies. Pack Parts. That's where you can find all your parts for all your radios. All right. The Addison Boche AVK6. Yeah, yeah, amazing. That's, yeah, no, that's us. Uh, yeah. Uh, what amp do you like to use with the dual kicker comp R 10 inch loaded enclosure boxes? Paul typically will sell the, what is it, what is it, the C what? The 601, is that the CX? CS. CX 601 is what he likes to yes. sell on that one. Yes, yes. And it sounds pretty good. All right, hi, what's the difference between a free air subwoofer and a normal? I'm looking for an eight inch subwoofer uh, for my rear deck. What's the best thing? Um, Okay, hold on. Uh, what's the name of the company we get our heat shrink from? Uh, Wire Care. Wire Care. With the heat, the five-star logoed heat shrink we buy from a company called Wire Care. They'll yeah. put whatever logo you want on your heat shrink. Yep. Um, as far as the difference between a free air and a non-free air woofer, a free air woofer is still okay. So it, it all comes down to isolation. So a free air woofer is designed to work at, in an enclosure that is so big it's considered free air. But where the thing is is it's not like you could just hold it in your hand and then it makes sound it still it has to see isolation between the front of the cone and the back of the cone that's why you can just like cut a hole in, in a room or a boat or something like that and mount the woofer and it sounds great it's relying on the suspension system in the woofer to control it but as long it has to see isolation so if like it was in like a bench seat, as soon as you lift up that bench seat and the front of the woofer could see the back of the woofer, then it would just start going. You'd have no, you'd have tons of cancellation. Yeah. So a free air woofer is just a woofer that works in such a large enclosure that it's considered infinite baffle or free air. Whereas a normal woofer, the suspension system is relying on that back pressure from the box to create the base in, in, in control it all has to do with control that's a real generic way to describe that but that's how you want to think of it all right let's and Gary see. Biggs had the the two free air woofers in his BMW at Knowledge Fest that was incredible but yeah. you have to put a lot of work in a car into that baffle because like I said anytime that reverse wave sees that front wave bye bye all right okay this is got, got me confused okay um, talk to Paul yeah. Sending you a JBL CP100 next week for turn the key, wire harness, fabrication, W, uh, of course, the steering wheel controls. controls. I asked you about okay. live last Saturday. Okay. I'll have to talk to Paul yeah. and find out what that's, we'll, we'll find out what, what that's that? about. Yeah. Uh, instead of Dynamite, look at a product. IT oh. Tags, what's going on, what man? What did I say? Um... Instead of diamond, look for a product called Membrane from Restore Mod Air. It has the normal foil, yeah, close cell foam. Yeah, it, like I said, it's it's pretty much all the same. Greetings from Canada. All right, What's Tony. Up? Tony from UK said, "What is the car that you guys always hate to work on?" Huh? With the Nissan. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's gonna yeah, be a you Nissan. Got, you know, you, you gotta pull the emergency brake. Yeah, it's gonna be a boot. Nissan. Yeah. And um. Yeah. It, okay, each car has something that sucks about yeah. it. Let's yeah. be honest. Each each car, it doesn't matter what kind of car, every car has that one thing. Corvettes suck. Corvettes um, sucks, yeah. See, like, like Volkswagen. For me, Volkswagen, to take the whole panel, you gotta, like, yeah. this, this well, then part. then you got the radio, like, like here, the, the, the clips. And then here, the, the clips just, on the radio yeah. always want Mercedes, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Mercedes definitely suck. Nissan suck because you have to take the gas pedal or the brake out. Like Dean said, um, every car has... Corvettes are just fragile and, and you know... Uh, oh, but no every kidding. car... You, you pick me a car and I'll tell you what sucks about it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But there again, sometimes it might be amazing. Yeah. Like there might yeah. be some... Like there again, on a, on a, Volt, on a Volkswagen, I like just if like... it's an automatic, yes. the hole in the firewall, it's just a grommet. Oh, yeah. You pull it off and it's like... Ah. It's awesome. 
Um, Mercedes is a cake. Mercedes, uh, okay. It, it, it can be cake, but there again, Mercedes. Depends you have what to kind of cake. Think. <laughs> as long as you're thinking like the way they made it, then yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, a Mercedes. If everything's located in the trunk, yeah. it's awesome. But then you have to run a base knob. Yeah. And so then you got to dick with that. And then again, Mercedes, they have those retractable headrests. Okay. That are controlled. So if you have to get that rear deck out, yeah. you have to deal with those headrests that retract. You got those two little black things that you Porsche have to Porsche 911 so convertible. Uh, oh yeah, Porsche. Porsche oh, yeah, yeah. Those suck. Getting yeah. from getting into the a car from camera, the firewall. Yeah. yeah. That's, and, and of course, yeah. it has no accessories, so you got to do that. I think Chevy, Chevy Tahoe is okay. You know, it's because they all. But yeah. <laughs> That's it. How are you from Arizona? What's going on? A Hummer 2. Hummer 2, the, yes, it's, it's, it's crazy. Well, know? they're in the Hummer 2. Yeah, to get the radio out, you got to you gotta <laughs> almost and then slide this back. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, um, so there again, it, it, and it's not that it's not easy because we're sitting here rattling off all the things we have to do to do it. But those days where you get in and you're like, throw me a Ford Ranger, man, or throw me an F-150, and they don't. And it's like, yeah. oh. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> 911 is a German Civic. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And a Mercedes is a taxi. I would cab, love so. to. I would love to own a German Civic. Believe me. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Uh, hello guys. I recently purchased a '98 Rav Rav4. Four. Uh, to get the Metra back to the audio sucks. Will the small oh. cell power subwoofer fit under the seat? Hmm. Maybe. You know, now, okay. speaking of the, of the, of the self-powered subwoofers, when I, when I was at Kicker, What's they were telling coming? me how many of those they actually sell. The numbers were, it blew my mind. It blew my mind how mm -hmm. many people buy that little Kicker-powered 8-inch woofer. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so that, not that I can talk about it, but next year they're re-revving that, um, which is going to be amazing. Who actually owns 5-Star? Not this guy! Yeah. Paul is yeah. the owner of 5-Star. I am an installer. He's an installer. Um, Paul over there. Paul owns Five Star, five star. the store. Yeah. This is mine. Yeah. yeah. So anything that has anything to do with the YouTube channel, the What's up, Tim? Facebook page, the Instagram account, the website are all mine. Yeah. And then everything that has to do with paying the bills, hey. buying equipment, Booking, that's all Paul. Yeah. So we take care of all this, this stuff, and he takes care of signing my check. All right. When I turn off my car, my subwoofer pops. Any idea? Maybe you have a Pioneer? Yeah, is it a Pioneer? Greedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it a Pioneer F4? So you have what's called turn-off pop. Turn-off pop can be caused by a number of different things. Most of the time, it's the equipment, um, but... Like for example, like some of the, the the GMD Pioneer amplifiers have turn off pops. So you turn off the key and then you get plump and it turns off. And you're like, oh. Now sometimes if you're doing high level input into the amplifier, it's just the the car shutting down is giving you the boom ah. Oh. Yeah, TR12 um, delay. So yeah, I was gonna say what a lot of people like to do is take the TR TR12 TR7. Uh, you can add in a delay. So what happens is you turn it off. It keeps the remote turn on powered up for up to like 10 or 15 seconds. That way you're far enough away. So you don't hear it. You don't still hear there. the pop. It's still there. <laughs> but it's but. not stabbing you in the spine every time you turn off the car. So what's up, Johnny? What's up, Johnny? So yeah, the TR, the TR is the way to go. It will add a delay to it so that you, you can be gone when it actually does that. Yeah. Um, I had to do that a couple times. I had to do that in a Jeep once for another guy that had high level and there was just a big issue when the high level would turn off it would just like you would you would scare the the poo out of you for sure you'd definitely soil your pants and it was like oh okay yeah um so we actually used two when we staggered the on the off so uh, my rockford 363 did that yeah, yeah. hello yeah. from new jersey and actually the 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 amp pro gm 61 with the dsr1 will do that too so what we have yeah. to do for that is we actually have to turn the DSR-1 off with the remote turn on out of the Amp Pro yep. and then turn the amplifiers on and off with an accessory so that they're not turning off at the same time. Correct. Um, putting a relay on it works well. There again, yeah. it just depends on what's causing that turn on. Relay might not work. Relay could make it worse. Yeah. 
Um, everybody loved, yeah, Johnny. Everybody loved the amp rack for the audio control. Oh yeah, that was yeah, nice. that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Uh, do you install ham radios? Uh, I haven't done that in years. Um, hello from the UK. What's going when on? When you visited Kicker, it seemed like the founder was not a fan of the camp. He's actually a huge fan of the camp. So, inside baseball, that night we went to a place called Eskimo Joe's. Anyone that's familiar with Oklahoma apparently yeah. knows about Eskimo Joe's. And apparently, Oklahoma is a ranch state. And I mean ranch, the creamy white sauce that you dip stuff in. They bring that stuff out by the boatloads. Uh, Haley was really excited. She didn't get to go, but I sent her lots of pictures of it going, dude, look what they're dropping off at the table. Anyways, so we're sitting at the table. It was a whole bunch of dealers, and uh, Lori and I sit at the table because we're, we're talking and we're being antisocial because yeah. we're just conversing with ourselves. Yeah. And this guy named John Myers, you might know from a little show called Overhauling, it's who works day. with Kicker, he came and sat down with us. And we're like, oh, hey, you know, and we're talking it up, and, and it's kind of nice because there's somebody at the table way more famous than I am as far as this whole TV thing goes because he was on overhauling yeah. for years. Anyways, and then of course, um, while I'm telling yeah. the story. And, I, I, and mm. then you, you lost it. Uh. Steve <laughs> sits down next to us. So it's Steve, John Myers, Squirrel. Lori, and Dean Squirrel. all sitting at this table. I'm like, man, I know people that would pay Sounds to be at scotty. this table right now. And we're talking about all kinds of things. And it's really an amazing situation because we're talking about like key, we're talking about speakers. And this man that is not this man, but Steve, oh, who's, who's uh -huh. like been doing this for 40 years, is still on point with yeah. everything that's going on at Kicker. He's talking about, do I need to put grills in these boxes? And I'm talking about, why don't you put bass knobs in? And he's like, well, we sell this many. And he's giving me numbers on, we sell this many bass knobs and blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, what are you know, and this and that. And it's like, Holy God, man, this guy is on point with everything. I can tell you right now, nothing leaves Kicker, period, without getting his approval first. So to think he doesn't like something, uh-uh, no. He is 100% on it. He's on top of this stuff. On it. That guy had, for as big as that company is, and as much stuff as they pump out, and as many people they have working there, he, know? he knows all of it. It was scary, yeah. scary. All right, so, has, uh, has uh, anyone ever you, come William. back with an amp overheating? No. When you hiding behind the panel, no? no? Believe it or not, no. no and I'm with you. I thought by now we would definitely have amplifiers yeah. coming back heating up because I can't run for five miles without overheating. Yeah. Um, yeah. These yeah. amplifiers yeah. get worked. Every amplifier we put in gets worked. And that makes it... Okay, funny story about that since we're throwing some more inside baseball. We did a, a video... Um, with a SCAR audio amplifier that we mounted into the side of an SUV. Yeah. We put it backwards and we put an, an amp rack and it, it, it tucked in. And we actually yeah. took a SCAR sticker and put it on the back side of the amplifier yeah. so the guy could see what it was. And everyone was like, oh my God, that amplifier is going to overheat. It's going to die. It's never going to make it. Blah, blah, blah. And the funny thing was, is we'd actually done that car eight months before we put up the video. So yeah. it had been in the car for eight months functioning. And of course, you know, this is video and it's TV and it's all that yeah. fun stuff, you know. And everyone's like, oh my God, it'll, you know, it's gonna die, it's gonna die. And I'm sitting there laughing going, it's been in there for eight months. It's not yeah. gonna die. Yeah. It works great. It's like, you know, it's funny, like when people say, well, I mean, oh, I yeah, the plastic people say, oh, you know, out. those plastic fuel, uh, they're gonna melt in six gonna months. Melt. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, it's been in the car for six months already and we haven't had any problems. Yeah. Uh, I remember that install with this car amp. Yeah, it was cool. It was, I mean, the thing pounded. But yeah, no, the amplifier never overheat. All right. Uh, but I will, well, real quick, I will say this. The minute we run into a problem with anything we do, that's the last time that ever gets done. That's that. I don't deal with things that suck. So if we're doing something and it doesn't work the way we want it to and yeah. we have issue, we change it immediately. And going forward from whatever we've done, we change. And then if there's anything backlog that we had an issue with, we'll change as well. So if someone comes in and they're constantly having a problem with it, we're going to address it immediately and we're going to fix it. And then everything going forward or everything going back, it doesn't matter. It will never be done that way again. It'll be fixed because I don't like headaches at all. I get enough of them just existing. I don't need stuff that I don't create my own. Okay. All right. Uh, portable high resolution players work like Tidal, Ooh. Spotify, Pandora, through yeah. the phone via USB. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming. You know, like a high resolution portable player. It won't control it. Title? No, I mean, but I, I mean, it's you, not you can it. feel the same. No. Uh, 
response of the music? Mm. Mm. Really? No, you're going to be limited by the, the input of the radio. Mm. So if it's I, not... I, I don't, you know, I don't it, think Spotify and Pandora have high they, resolution. They don't, they don't no. have high resolution. They sound like crap. Tidal, so yeah. Tidal would be the yeah. only one that's going to give you that. Yeah. You still need some form what of... What about from Canada? You know, the you, you need some form of high resolution input on it to get that high resolution output. That's why, like, a, like the one guy takes the DSR-1 and he takes his FIO player that has a... Um, coax uh, digital output and goes directly into the DSR-1 yeah. with it and then he gets high-res audio into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, problem solved. Amen to headaches. Uh, I know that Florida Heat was just at Disney. We're going to Disney. Love <laughs> I, the Disney. Ox? I, I, yes. Um, I, 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 I love when people they don't do car audio tell me what to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, I mean, hold on, let me go back here. Um, Sounds like Kicker Guy loves what he's doing. Dude, how could you not love what you're oh, doing? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, whoa. What's up from AZ? Uh, I would love to see how the pros install Killer System in 2009 to 2012 Ford Escape. Do we do a Ford Escape? Yeah, we do Ford Escapes. We, what, what was the goofy one that we did? What's the... Oh, that was the Flax or Flux or... Yeah, Flex. Um, flex. The Flex, flex. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there was a question about Flex here. Um... Hi guys, greetings from Germany. I have a question about sending the gain on a simple for amplifier, which has a bass knob. I was trying different methods, but I just, where did it go? Oh, dang. You gotta go slow, man. I lost it. What are you trying, what, 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 what was it? It was what? finding a bass knob, sending a gain knob. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, not to bring up bad memories, was there ever a time that Fernando did something that you really got mad at him for? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh heck what? yes. Uh, did you ever do anything that I got mad about? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, all the time. All the time. Yeah, that's what we hear. Just to, and know, I do argue. things that piss him off, so... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, dude, you, get, you gotta understand. Six days a week, 9.30 to 6.30. Yeah. There's no way you can argue happy with people. Oh, we argue yeah. all the time. We, argue, yeah. we were arguing today about, um... Free weights versus doing a machine. We finally yeah. came to an impasse where we both agreed on something specific. And just move on. But most of the time we don't, and we argue. Now, yeah. as far as him doing something that drives Variety. me crazy, every now and then, yeah, because yeah, you know I'll see something needs to be done a specific way, and then he'll be doing something totally the opposite of what yeah. I'm thinking it'll be done, and I'll be like, yeah. what, what are you doing? Yeah. And he'll be like, I'm doing. I'll be like, why? Yeah. And, and you know, it's like, ugh. But there again, we. You know, the part of what we were showing yeah. that video on Friday about, the, the half hour video, half hour, just want to emphasize the half hour video point. Yeah. I think it was long enough. I think you guys made out What's okay up, this Victor? week. We had one little eight minute video. I apologize, I wanted to get some rest. Um, but I, I gave you a half hour video on Friday. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> the reason why we spend a lot of time discussing what we're doing before we do the install is so that we don't have to worry about it. He knows what he has to do, I know what I have to do, and we go forward with that. So, yeah. you know, it's always moving, you know, like if I'm stuck on an amp rack, I could be stuck on an amp rack for four or five hours wiring one of those things up. If he's doing the speakers and he's doing roadkill, I know yeah. he's going to have six hours in that. Yeah. So I'm already thinking about the next thing that is going to be done and he's already thinking, I need to get out of Dean's way. Yeah. So he's doing them in a, like, okay, so if we're going to put the amps here, power wire's going here, signal's going to go here. We if I start on this door, I want to jump onto yeah. that door next so that when he's doing this, I want to get the rear doors done. So we're constantly trying to figure that stuff out. And then when something doesn't go right, then it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And, and that's just mainly because, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, we both, you know, hey, see you. Whatever. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, Bye, Rolf. So what, what did I miss with? starting from the beginning? Real quick, since you asked, Monday's live show on Facebook yep. at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time is going to have Dave Dave from the Kip and Dave show, which is on uh, Kicker. So if yep. you're, we're going to have three people from Kicker. We're going to have Lori, who you guys know from the video. We're going to have yep. Dave from the Kip and Dave show. And we're going to have Bart. Bart. From the Black Skunk Works of Kicker. That's right. He is the guy that knows all the secrets of stuff that's coming out. He's probably not going to tell us any nope. of them. So nope, don't even not. ask. Nope. Because I was just in the meeting with him when I was in Oklahoma. And I know he knew stuff that he wasn't telling us. But he started out the conversation with saying, Oh, I could answer that. But then I'd have to kill you all. Exactly. And I was like, Oh, awesome. Da, da, but da, 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 da. we're going to have Dave. Yeah. We're going to have Bart. 
from Kicker. We're going to talk about them. They are two of the inter very interesting guys. Uh, they've both been in this industry for 30 plus years, I think. Yeah. Um, so a lot of neat stuff there. We'll probably talk a little bit of Kicker. A little bit. Why not? Um, and then so, we'll go on from there. So what? he will be totally quiet. <laughs> he might actually not say anything. Actually, he used to work for Rockford, and Rockford has a thing called RTTI, which you is can their come right up. You can come. which is their education program. And he actually started that, which I thought was funny because we went down a tr terrible rat hole about that while we were there, and apparently no one in the room other than me knew that he knew that or he started that whole program. Okay. And of course, he's just sitting up there and he's being so politically. That's that's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. And he wasn't going, you know, I did that back at Rockford when I worked there. You know, he wasn't doing that. And I, I would, of course, done that because I'm that guy. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, All right. What is a decently prized DSP? Uh, you have the DSR-1. Uh, you TGT. have the Access, um, the Access DSP. You have the, and those are two that we've played with. Yeah, the key um, key. You have the Alpine. Believe it or not, the Alpine DSP is extremely reasonably priced yeah. for what you get. Uh, you get an eight channel 25 watt by, or you get 25 watts by eight amplifier built into it along with all the preamp inputs and outputs. Yeah. Uh, and you can set it from your phone. Yeah. Um, that's a DSP we really want to start playing with more. Um, mini DSP, thank you, Sean. That was the next thing I was trying to think yeah. of. Uh, but there's four DSPs that are reasonably priced under four hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, there's Haley. Oh, uh, dude, you, you just put it I'm in there. Oh, there. Hey, so you there's, there. That's Haley. Yeah. Anyways, there's Sue. Um, you gotta turn the speaker down. Yeah, turn it down. It's really loud. Uh, it's not even loud. Uh, Dayton, eight channel DSP. All right. So there's five. All right. So there's five. Love the show. Please help. Okay. Um, is there only, what does that say? Is Any there one that goes coming? more than 35 watts? Yeah. Hi, Haley. Um, what was what was the 35 watt thing? Hang on. I don't know. Why, what, I mean, we can see you slowly closing the door. Um, <laughs> what, here, go over there. Go over there, you're not. Uh, hang on, like I mean, the, the what, what, are, what are you talking corner. about? I don't know, I don't know. Uh, hi, Haley. Hey. Um, Thinking of buying a DSP, so we'll keep an eye out for reviews. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would like to have more than 35 watts out. Of a radio? That would be Sony. Um, but that's what amplifiers are for. So uh, a kicker key only has, yeah, it has. Uh, so the real question of that, so yeah, I know, right? Um, oh, hi, Haley. So the kicker key is small and a DSP. However, it is September, almost October. January is right around the corner. Um, I'm not saying that there's gonna be a bigger version of the key, because um, I honestly don't know. Yeah. But there will be a, possibly be a bigger like version of the key, possibly, which will be cool. And we'll have to get it in, and we can take the smaller version out of Haley's car and put the bigger version. I'd like a five-channel version of the key, personally. Cool. I, I, I think that would be really neat. Uh, I don't like Sony CD radios. Mm, it's okay. Um, then the only other radio that has a big amp in it was was Alpine. They made the Sound Miser, but that was only available in two radios, and none of them were video. Hmm. Um, Audison 8.1 bit. Yeah. Uh, but that kind of puts it out of the league of inexpensive. Um, but that's a nice piece. Uh, but it's not cheap, that's for sure. All right, uh, but there See again, you later. the the, the um, okay, love dudes have a great night. Thanks, man. You too. Um, but there again, the Audison eight point or eight point nine um, was low power. It was only like forty five fifty watts, but it was low power. So I, 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 that was. Bit. Uh, bridge some channels. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. There again. Just in that case, buy a DSR-1 and buy a real amplifier. Yeah. You know, that would be way to go. I wonder what that noise was. It's been bothering me the whole show. Oh. Um, yeah, just uh, I just got a Pioneer. Uh, what will the next sound upgrade be for Haley's car? Uh, the same nine. Yeah. <laughs> no? No. Um, right now, there's Come no plans on. to do anything more to Haley's car. 
Um, because there's really nothing to do in it. We just put new speakers, you got a sub, and I don't want to take out the radio. Yeah. So I don't I don't foresee anything coming, but that's not to say there won't be something coming because there again, if Kicker does come out with new key amplifiers and they're nice and we talk to them and we get some cool stuff like a five channel, I would like to take out the kicker key small amplifier yeah. and put a bigger five channel with like a kicker sub in there, that would be cool. Two eight two eighteen and some handy scar. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Uh, they've been asking, how do you like the 8 so far? Is it sounding good? Is it starting to it break in? It sounds good. Actually, it sounds better. Uh, yeah, yeah. Told, well, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. we put it in, so it yeah. would break in. So yeah. we needed it to it break sounds, in. It sounds way better. Yeah. So if everything goes according to plan, then we should be able to start shooting the, the Rockford video for the reason why we put it in this week. But what's been happening is Tuesday night when we like to film our extracurricular activities, such as car stereo labs, we've had cars in the install bay stay in the night. So it's really been, and parts everywhere, so we can't do that those. Um, yep. So any opinions on the Jail Audio 8 channel amps with integrated DSP? Those are cool. Those are nice. Those are really nice. Um, we, we got to play with those briefly when we were at Knowledge Fest. I like the plugs. The plugs were probably the coolest thing on That's them. That's awesome. Because yeah. like for us, we have the, the, hey from Sweden. What's up? For us, we have the Rockford ones and I hate the plugs on those micro T amplifiers. They've been the bane in my existence. Um, forever. Do we? Yeah. What did it say? Do we have um, air conditioning? Nope. Do you guys air condition the install bay? No, we don't. We yeah. have air conditioning for the lobby, which is right there. For the, the air conditioner room. runs out there, but for here we do not air condition it because I don't want people hanging out in the install bay. Um, not that I don't mind when people come in the install bay and we, we talk to them, we show them their car, but as far as camping out for the whole day, it can be distracting, not because we don't want them near their car. You can come and look at your car and feel your car and stand over our shoulders and do this. It's what it is. Yeah. But uh, it slows down the work process. So by you back here sweating your, your butt off, um, you're, it's uncomfortable for you. You can stand at the window and watch there in the comfort of air conditioning. So we'd much rather have you be cool up front and let us get through because when I have to stop to talk to you all the time, it well, does Rob, drag things the guy, up. he just left. What did he say? Oh my God, this is so Oh my God, it's so hot here. back here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Um, when is Paul going inter to uh, integrate into JL Audio? Ooh. Probably never. No. Um, that was one of the things that... Uh, at it's not because not... We don't want it? It's not that, yeah, it's not that, but we're... They don't. You know, I was talking with the JL Audio, one of the one of the big guys at JL Audio happens to be somebody that I knew. I didn't even realize I knew him. And we were talking about it, and it, it's really not something that I feel we could do well with, only because we carry so many other brands, yeah. so what would I have to get rid of to bring JL, J, to, to yeah. bring JL in? Mm -hmm. And that would be the tough thing. Mainly because we have we're so saturated here in this area, and there are two other JL Audio dealers in yeah. the area. So yeah. I don't know what we could do to give them the numbers they want. So it would be tough. We would have to see. But right now, unless one of those dealers loses not it, right now, it's not going to happen. Have you heard anything from my dad about Volkswagen? No, you know. The last we were talking about with iData had to do with a Camaro kit, and. They are coming out with one, supposedly. Um, but other than that, no. Dean, on the F-150, you, you did this week. You ran new speaker wires to the door. Why not? Okay, you're going to have to go back and watch the beginning, Victor. We actually talked about that. Yeah. Good question, though. But we, you, somebody beat you to it, and we spent about 20 minutes on it. So what's, what's the, the best, best amplified subwoofer amplified? I'm guessing you mean amplified subwoofer? That's going to, for us, for that's going to be what we put in Haley's car, which is the Rockford P310 or 12. Yep. It sounds surprisingly amazingly. I mean, it's like, wow. Every time we put one in, we're like, wow, man, yeah. really? Ugh. Uh, before that, my favorite was the Fusion, because uh, they before they modified it into the piece of crap they have now. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no problem, Victor. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. No reason to apologize. <laughs> Dean could could be a voice of John C. Riley. Who's John C. Riley? You got a phone? Look it up before I forget. Um, please. Oh, you left it over there. Uh, what happens to the used gear you take out of cars? The owners. We give it all back. All back. Everything goes back to the owner. I don't want empty boxes. I don't want old speakers. I don't all, want all old equipment, fires, old radios, any, nothing. any wire we take out, if they want back, we give it to them. Otherwise, we do have a recycle bin and we put it in there. Let me see. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in, uh, well, he's got the hair. I mean, he's a heck of a lot bigger than me, uh, but he's in the new Laurel and Hardy movie. I don't know what that is. Uh, Laurel and Hardy? Yeah, anyways. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Step Brothers movie. Yep. 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 Uh, and uh, also Talladega Nights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then 440. Uh, and you're yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, 4400. Oh no, I'm not putting a 4400 in her car. No, the dash looks stupid in her car. It, it just. It's it's nice. I, I don't. An angle. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the aftermarket looks even sillier. Uh, I found a Rockford P300 amp. I think the number. And hooked it up into my car the other day to test. It's still going, and it was amazing. Well, there Ooh. you go. Um. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, saw that too. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. We know who he, Haley actually showed me a picture, so. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it, what does that say? Is there a business that repairs amplifiers? Yes. I have two Rockford Power Series and randomly stop and play. play. Um, contact Rockford Fosgate and they will give you who they recommend for their classic amplifiers. That was one of the things that was cool about Kicker is they actually repair all their amplifiers because on the desk of Pete's yep. was an old school, uh, he called it an 08, which I'm guessing refers to the year. But yeah. So what do you guys think will be the next big thing in car audio? Ooh. Um, obviously, I, I, honestly, I see it being more DSP. I think DSP is going to pretty much take us into the future here for the next couple years. Okay. We're going to see better Amp Pro integration. Um, and then we're going to just see DSP. I think right now DSP and, and making DSP better, easier, and more understandable. Uh, more, is channels? Go, uh, more channels is going to be the future. Mm -hmm. um, I know manufacturers want high res audio to be somewhere in that. And it may, it may not, because honestly, um, Haley, do you care? What do you listen? How? What do you, what do you listen to music on? What service? Spotify, Pandora, Pandora, Pandora. Pandora which, if you didn't know, Pandora was just bought by SiriusXM. Ooh, awesome. meaning, uh, yeah, they're amp repair. No, but they, ha if you contact Rockford, they'll give you an I, someone in your area that will rec that will repair your amplifier. All right. So, Bright Star Car Audio boxes are true to the specs. They'll build it to whatever specs you want, yes. You just have to talk to him. Talk to so Sean. So if you talk to Sean there, um, you probably have to call night. Anyways, they'll build you whatever you want. So they are hand-built. They don't use CNC. They don't, it, everything there is cut, hand-built, and assembled, okay, by a person. But yes, as far as specs go, yep. they will spec build you any box you want. Um, that's that, you know. Yeah. Uh, that would explain why Pandora sounds, sounds so, so compressed. compressed. Pandora yeah. sounds like crap, yeah. but uh, that was before. SiriusXM just bought them this week, so they, yeah. they've always sounded crappy. But my point is, is <laughs> what does that mean? They're, they're, gonna, sound, they're yeah. gonna sound even crappier. Exactly. Uh, maybe they sounded worse this week, I don't know. Um, but that's that, and hey, listen, we gotta get out of here. Yeah. It's time to go. The girls are here, which means they want me to leave. We have to get off to the melting pot. Yay. So, things to keep in mind, Monday show, Bart, Dave from the Kip and Dave show Laurie. are gonna be here. Laura will stop in and say hi. John will be in the background. Thank you again for the nut drivers. Yep. Who was that? Uh, um, right there, it's in the box. In the box. Right, right what? there, on top of the label. Larry, thank you, Larry, Larry. for the nut drivers. Um, places you can find a t-shirt, teespring slash store slash five star. There's three new t-shirts out right now. There's addiction, it's there's nuts. at the end of the day, and then there's a new splattered paint five star, which is my personal favorite. Purple yeah, looks awesome. I'm probably gonna order that one for myself. Yeah, that's cool. I like and the yellow And you relax. I thought you said you didn't want purple. I liked purple. Oh, you're wearing you the Oregon shirt. Because you Jason had to leave, so he didn't make it today. Um, Patreon. Patreon is a place where you can support Ooh. the shows that we do. Patreon will also get you a podcast, yeah. video podcast that you, as a Patreon member, are the only people that get to see. Yay! Anything else? What did I forget? Oh, the boring life of Dean and Haley. You can yeah. see me. You can see Haley do boring things. Yay! Boring things. Um. All right. With that in mind, who keeps talking? The what? Are you Are you mumbling over there? No, the stickers. Stickers, yes, stickers. We, we covered stickers earlier, but... The stickers? Say it louder, I'm like, what the heck? Um, ah, stickers, five star, what is it, what is it? Five star. What is it? Say it. Five star sticker at yahoo.com. 
Five star sticker at yahoo.com is a place you can go to get stickers. And then she gets shy and she's not even on camera. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for boring. Bowling is not boring. Yes, I know. it is. No, hush. All right, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us on this beautiful Saturday. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Be kind. Be fun. Be all that. See but be ya. back Monday for another live show on Facebook. You guys have a wonderful time, as always. Bye. Bye.